Welcome to part 33 of the Basic Training Booster Pass Edition. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Athens Dash on 150cc. The recommended build for this track is going to be Yoshi, Teddy Buggy, Rollers, and Paper Glider. Immediately after the run begins, start a left drift to do a mini turbo trick off the first ramp. Then we're going to do three more mini turbos before tricking off the ramp to grab two coins. Couple things to note here. The right drift that we're doing needs to be wide because this will delay our final mini turbo. This is important because we're going to use that boost to get some extra elevation off the ramp, which is what allows us to more easily grab two coins at the same time. Which is another reason why we don't just drive straight and trick off the ramp like in this clip here. The positioning required to grab the two coins is pretty tight, and if you miss it, it's not really the end of the world because there's a couple backup coins we can get later on in the run. And trust me, as we're going to see soon, the worst part of the track by far is yet to come, so we don't really want to waste a lot of time resetting here. Now, after the last trick off the ramp, wait until you go off the curb before pressing down the drift button so that you can land in a left drift. Once again, I messed that up a little bit here, but it's not going to be a big deal because really the goal is to start a right drift before getting to the stairs. Because the goal is to mini turbo trick off this ramp and land in a right drift to grab the two coins in the middle of the stairs. But this is much easier said than done. The setup I use is to do as wide of a right drift as possible without bonking into the wall so that I'm on the left edge of the ramp by the time I get to it. Then. Just before going off the ramp, start holding right as you do this trick. This should allow you to either grab the coins directly or else buy you enough time to do some minor course correction. But in either case, after getting a super mini turbo, do a left hop to release and then trick off the ramp. For the first mushroom shortcut, you want to use the mushroom well before getting to the off-road so that you can take as tight a line as possible. And then after building up an ultra mini turbo, do a right drift to do some glider vectoring. You may have to hold a down or six o'clock position on the joystick for a bit because at the end of this glider is a stone platform that's deceptively tricky to dodge if you don't know it's coming. But once you get over it, land in a wide left drift, build up a mini turbo, and then take a super tight line around this turn, only widening up once you've passed the dirt hill on the left. Release the ultra mini turbo, and then this. This is the second and much more aggressively infuriating of the blind setups, and let's just get the tricky bit out of the way first. If you want to take this shortcut without being flung into the next decade, aim your cart for this little gap in the wall at the end of the stair section before going off the ramp. Then use your mushroom as soon as you land. There's a tiny bit of leeway here, but if you're too far to the left, the hill will act like a ramp and kill your run. And if you're too far to the right, you'll run into these two trees on the right, which will kill your run. The other thing to point out is the left hop right drift wall bonk that we did. This is intentional because it allows us to stabilize our line while buying enough time to mini turbo trick off the first ramp. Obviously this gives us way less time to set up for the shortcut itself, so if you don't want to deal with that, then just drive straight and trick off the first ramp. But do note that you still want to drift off the second ramp since this allows you to build up an ultra mini turbo before tricking off the stairs. And the final thing to point out about this strategy is that if you find that you're too far to the left when you land, just wait for a bit before using your mushroom and it should allow you to take the cut normally. Whew. Fortunately, from here on out, the rest of the run is pretty straightforward. Oh wait, never mind, I lied, because there's this mini turbo trick that I like to do off this pillar here, but for some reason, the game randomly decides to just not give me the mini turbo, so the only thing I have to suggest there is to soft drift as best as you can. Now the rest of the run is pretty straightforward. There's a fun little left hop right drift mini turbo trick that we can do off the top of this dilapidated staircase, and once you get to the final straightaway, you want to trick as late as possible off the stairs because this is going to give you a super low trick off the penultimate staircase. This weird little drift that I'm doing is called a Kusan slide, and I've got an entire video dedicated to explaining exactly how it works that I really think more people ought to see. Now the basic idea is that after tricking, you land in a drift. Pressing the jump button as soon as the trick boost runs out will cause you to get a little boost to your speed. Although unfortunately I messed up the timing a little bit, which actually cost me a bit of time. But anyways, after that we are on to section 3. If you made it this far, congratulations, you are pretty much out of the woods. Right hop into a left drift off the middle of the staircase so that you can charge a mini turbo in midair, and then upon landing use your mushroom and go off the hill a bit to finish charging the ultra mini turbo. Then, right drift to do some glider vectoring off the last ramp. You want to hold something like an up left or 10 o'clock angle on the joystick to get back onto the track as quickly as possible, because what we want to do is land on the final ramp at such an angle so that when we trick, we'll get a little bit of airtime and land back on the ledge to actually get two tricks here. This is way easier if you don't do the glider vectoring, but it's also way slower. The rest of the run is pretty self-explanatory, so let's talk a bit more about the track while checking out my current personal best. And by the way, if you found this video helpful so far, I would really appreciate if you could leave a like and a comment to let me know, because this helps push the video out in the algorithm, which is by far the best way to support the channel. Thank you very much, I really do appreciate it. Now, Athens Dash. 
Playing this track is like being in one of those relationships where when you first start dating, everything's great. You laugh at all each other's silly jokes. You have those playful little arguments over who's gonna hang up first. And then five months in, you start to realize, you know, this person's actually kind of mean. And despite all your efforts to turn the relationship into something healthy and worthwhile, you realize that no matter how hard you work, you're only gonna ever end up hurt. Literally, my hands hurt so fucking bad, y'all. You have no idea. Okay, all jokes aside though, I actually do really love this course and it might be my favorite city course in the game. It's a track that seems completely intractable at first glance, especially when it comes to the second mushroom shortcut. But just when it seemed like I was never gonna be able to get a run together, I took a step back, watched what happened during a successful run and got to work developing at least a semi-consistent setup for it. And once I got that down, the rest was history. I guess what I'm saying is that this is a very difficult course, and there are a ton of strategies and minute details that are going to make you want to pull your hair out. And while it is frustrating to learn, for sure, it's a frustration that's born more out of knowing that you can make it happen and just needing to figure out how. This is the kind of difficulty that made the Shy Guy Fall shortcut so addicting to try and master, because once you finally do get a successful run, it's one of the greatest feelings the game has to offer. And it's honestly what keeps me interested in playing the game after having spent more than 2,000 hours on it over the last couple of years. Now to be clear, it's not that I'm saying the course is perfect by any means, I still do think the coin lines are pretty obnoxious here, and I'm not a big fan of having to set up drifts well before you can actually see what you're drifting towards, but at the end of the day, these really are just minor gripes on what I find to be an otherwise fantastic track. And that's everything you need to know to play Athens Dash on 150cc. Hopefully this video helped you all out, and if so, don't forget to subscribe before you leave because I release a new tutorial every week. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.